I actually brought reading Nora Roberts' book, Rising Tides, chapter 12. And let's start the roller coaster, shall we? It was like walking wide awake in a dream. Grace thought where you couldn't be sure what was going to happen next, but you just knew it would be wonderful. It was living inside a familiar world that had been polished into a constant state of anticipation and excitement. Days and nights were still filled with work, responsibility, small joys, and petty annoyances. But for now, with the full with this full rush of love, the joy seemed huge. The annoyances minute. Everything she'd ever read about love was true, she discovered. The sun shined brighter, the air smelled fresher, flowers were more colorful, the songs of birds more musical. Every cliche became her reality. There were stolen moments and a brace outside the pub during a break that left her jittery and delighted and unable to sleep long after she went home. A slow, intense look filled with awareness if she managed to linger long enough at the Quinn's house to see him. It seemed she was in constant state of yearning, only more acute now than that she knew what could be, what would be. She wanted to touch and be touched, to take that long, slow ride into pleasure and passion again, side by side, with the yearning, with the endless frustrations that life constantly intruded on dreams. There were never enough time to be alone, to simply be. She often wondered if even felt the same edgy knee dogging his heels throughout his day. She thought it must be something inside her, some long hidden sexual greed, and she didn't know whether to be delighted by it or mortified. She only knew that she wanted him constantly, that with every day that want that what passed into another night alone, that want increased. She wondered if he would be shocked, worried that he would be <laughs> She needed, she needn't have. He only hoped he'd timed it right. That is excuse to Jim for taking it to catch before checking all the pots. Weren't as ridiculously transparent as they seem. He was going to get that guilt he'd had him later, either. Ethan promised himself as he skirted the boat at his home dock. He would work a couple extra hours that evening in the boatyard to make up for leaving Cam on his own that afternoon. If he didn't have one hour alone with Grace, if he didn't release some of this pressure that was built, no, he'd go crazy. Then he'd be no good to anyone. If she already finished up the house and left, well, he'll just have to hunt her down, that's all. He had enough control left not to scare or shock her, but he just couldn't get through another day without her. His grin began to spread when he came through the back door and saw that the monitoring morning untidiness had yet been cleared away. The washer was rumbling in the laundry room. She hadn't finished. He started in the living room looking for signs of her. The cushions were all smooth and plump. The furniture dust free and shiny. And as the floor above his head gave a quick creak, he glanced up. At that moment, he thought fate was the most beautiful woman he'd ever known. Grace was in his bedroom. What could be more perfect would be much easier to learn to a daytime bed without jotting her sensibilities if she was already close by one. He started up the stairs, delighted when he heard her humming. Then his system she suffered a sizzling lightning bolt of lust when he saw she wasn't just close by his bed. She was all but on it. She leaned over, smooth, tuck and dress sheets, her long legs showcased in ragged cutoffs. His blood raced for a speed that left him breathless, that turned the low ache he'd learned to live with to a sharp and gnawing pain. He could see himself springing forward, dragging her on the bed, pulling and tearing at her clothes until he could hammer himself inside her. Because he could, because he wanted to, he made himself stand where he was until he was certain his control was firmly in place. Grace, she straightened, whirled, pressed the hand to her. Oh, I, oh, she couldn't speak, could barely think coherently. What would he think? She wondered gently if he knew she'd been fantasizing about rolling naked and sunny over these crisp these sheets with them. Her cheeks had gone pink, charming, and I didn't mean to sneak up on you. That's all right. He let out a long breath, but it did nothing to calm her racing heart. I didn't expect anyone to... What are you doing home so early in the day? Quickly, she clasped her hands together because they wanted to grab at him. Are you sick? No. It's not even three o'clock. I know. He stepped into the room, saw her press her lips together, moistened them. Take it slow, he reminded him, so don't spook her. Aubrey's not with you. No, Julie's minding her. Julie got a new kitten and Aubrey wanted to stay, so he smelled of water, salt, sun, made her lightheaded. Then we've got some time. He came a little I wanted to see you alone. You did? I've been wanting to see you alone since we made love that night. He lifted his head gently and circling that, but I've been wanting you.
he said quietly and lowered his mouth to hers so soft so tender her heart seemed to turn one long loose somersault in her chest her knees went weak they trembled even as she threw her arms around him she answered the tint of kiss with a flash of heat his fingers dug into her skin his mouth bruised hers for one wild and wicked moment she thought he would take her where they stood fast and frantic and free then his hands jiggled smooth over her his lips softened crushing over her come to bed with me he come to bed with me even as he lowered her her covering her she arched against him wanting and willing and patient with the clothes that spared separated her flesh from his it seemed like years since she had last touched him had last felt those hard planes those iron muscles moaning his name she tucked up his shirt left her hands poss possessive and possessing they aroused his breath came rashly burning his throat her movements on her emerged in a hurry hurry but he was afraid he would bruise her if he didn't take time didn't take care so he fought the slow to pace taste rather than devour crest rather than demand but where where she had once seduced him she now destroyed him he took it off her shirt found her naked beneath it she saw his eyes flash turned her burning blue that all but scorched her skin he was careful so careful not to bruise not to frighten slow slow to pace even when the brutal desire take take more take swiftly swarmed into him and his mouth was on her sucking her in with a desperate hunger that threatened to consume them both she threw her arm back reached but there was nothing to hold on to except the empty air. He dragged her up, his mouth streaking down her torso, teeth scraping until gasping for her. She folded herself around him. Couldn't wait. No one would kill him to wait. The only thought in his head was now. Had to be now. And even that was wrapped in the rusty edges of primal need. Primal need. He tucked out his shorts, cursing. The blood of his fingers inside her. She bucked, cried out, came. He watched her eyes go bleak, her head fall back so that the long line of her throat was there for him to feast on. Battle and violent urge to drive himself into her, continued to taste until the sharp void was filled. Then he freed himself from his jeans and slipped into her. She cried out again, rose to slam it right down around tight around him, and he lost his mind. Speed and heat and force. More. He shoved her knees up and stroked deeper, harder, darkly thrilled with her nails bent into his shoulders. He plunged inside her, quibbling with wrong, blind green. Sensation swamped her, scraped at her, stripped her into one shuddering mass of need. She thought she might die from it when the next orgasm slammed into her hard, hot fist. She thought she'd had and went limp, her hands sliding from his stamped shoulders. A silent fever flash of energy drained a lever. Exhausted, she heard his, low, his long, low groan, but his body plunged and then stiffened when he collapsed on her, panting, her lips curved in a smile, pure female satisfaction. The sunlight dazzled her eyes as she shook, his, shook her hands down and over his hips. Eat then, she turned her head to kiss him. No, not yet, she murmured when he started. She, not yet. He'd been rough with her and he cursed himself for a little not. Are you all right? Hmm? I could lie here all day just like this. I didn't take the time I meant to. We don't have as much as most people. No. It was just like you wouldn't even tell me if I hurt you. So he looked for himself, careful studying her face. He saw it in the sleepy satisfaction of a woman, well, inadvertently loved. I guess I didn't. <laughs> it was exciting. It was wonderful knowing you wanted me so much. Lazily, she tore the lock of his sun-tipped hair around her finger and hugged the gorgeously wicked sensation of being naked in bed with him in the middle of the day. I've been worried that I wanted you more than you could ever want me. You couldn't. To prove it, he kissed her long and slow and deep. This isn't the way I want it for you. Cramming minutes alone between chores and using those minutes to jump into bed because it's all we've got. <laughs> I've never made love in the middle of the day before. She smiled. I liked it. On a long breath, he lowered his brow to his. Had it been, impo had it been possible, he would have spent the rest of the day right there. And so we're going to have to figure out a way to find a little more time now and again. I've got tomorrow night off. You come by for dinner and stay. I ought to take you out somewhere. There's nowhere I want to go. I like it if we could have dinner in. Then there's my I'm making some tortellini. I just got this new recipe. When he left, she threw her arms around him. Chucked up another. The happiest moments ever. Like, oh, I love you, Ethan. She was so giddy with that. It took her a moment to realize he was no longer laughing. Gone very still. Her wildly bounding heart slowed and chilled. 
Maybe you don't want me to say that, but I can't help feeling it. I don't expect to say it back. I feel obliged to. His fingers pressed lightly against her lips. Out. Give me a minute, Grace. <laughs> he said quietly. The system had flooded. Rise the tides of joy, hopes, fears. He couldn't think past them, not clearly, but he knew her. Knew that what he said now and how he said it would be vitally important. I've had feelings for you for so long. He began, I can't remember when I didn't have them. I spent just as long telling myself I shouldn't have them. So all this is taking me some time to get used to. When he shifted this time, she didn't try to stop him. She nodded, warning his eyes and reached for a list. It's enough that you want me. Maybe even need me a little. It's enough for now, Ethan. This is also new for both of us. There's strong feelings, Grace. You matter to me more than any woman ever has. <laughs> she looked at him now. If he said it, she knew he meant it. Hope began to beat in her heart again. If you had feelings for me, strong feelings, why didn't you ever let me know? First, you weren't old enough. He pushed his hand through his hair, knowing that that was evasion, an excuse not the core of it. He couldn't tell the core of it. And I wasn't really comfortable having that kinds of thoughts and feelings for you I was having when you were still in high school. She could have leaped up in bed and dance since I was in high school. All this time? <laughs> yeah, all this time. Then you were in love with somebody else, so I didn't have any right to feel anything but friendship. She let out a careful breath, because it would be called a confession that jammed her. I was never in love with anybody else. It was always you. Jack, I never loved him, and everything that went wrong between us was more my fault than his. I let him be the first man to touch me because I never thought you would, and about the time I realized how foolish that was, I was pregnant. You can't say it was your fault. Yes, I can. To keep her hands busy, she began to tidy up the bed. I knew he wasn't in love with me, but I married him because I was afraid not to. For a while, I was ashamed, angry, and ashamed. She lifted the pillow, tucked it in her, its case, till one night when I was lying in bed thinking my life was older, and I felt this flutter inside me. She closed her eyes, pressed the pillow against her. I felt Aubrey, and it was so, so huge, that little flutter, that I wasn't ashamed or angry anymore. Jack gave me that. She opened her eyes again, carefully laid the pillow on the bed. I'm grateful to him, and I don't blame him for leaving. He never felt that flutter. Aubrey was never real to him. He was a coward and worse for leaving you waste before the baby was born. Maybe, but I was a coward and worse for being with him, for marrying him when I never had a fraction of the feeling for him that I did for you. You're the bravest woman I know, Grace. It's easy to be brave when you have a child depending on you. I guess what I'm trying to tell you is that if I made a mistake, it was going in so long going so long without letting you know I loved you. Whatever feelings you've had for me, Ethan, more than I ever thought you would have. And that's enough. I've been in love with you for the best part of ten years, and it's still not enough. She picked up the second pillow, and now it slipped out of her hands. When tears swam in her eyes, she closed them. She said, I thought I could live without ever hearing you say that. Now I need to hear you say it again so I can get my breath back. I love you, Grace. Her lips curved, her eyes opened. You sound so serious, almost sad when you say it. Wanted to see him smile again. Shot out a hand. Maybe you should practice. His fingers had just touched hers when the screen door slammed downstairs. Feet pounded on the stairs. You know, as they jerked apart, set the race down the hall, he skidded to a halt at the door to his room. And stood, stared, glanced at the bed. She's not quite smoothed out the pillow on the floor. And his gaze shifted, filled with a bitter fury that was much too adult. And his young face. You bastard! There was loathing in the tone as he snapped at Ethan. Then disgust as his eyes looked at Grace. I thought you were different! Seth! She took a step forward, but he turned on his heel and went, Oh god, Ethan! <laughs> she started to rush after the boy. Ethan going, No, I'll go after him. I know what he's feeling. Don't worry. Gave her arm a gentle squeeze before walking out. Still, she followed him to the steps, worried sick. She'd been. she never seen such dark hate in the eyes of a child. Damn it, damn it, Seth. I told you to hurry up. Came slid in the front door just as Ethan hit the bottom of the steps. Came with up, saw Grace. For the grand tug at his mouth. Oops. <laughs> I don't have time for lame jokes. Ethan shot. Seth just took off. What? Why? Struck him even before the word was a... Oh, shit. He must have gone out the back. I'm going after him. Shook his head before Came could put us. It's me he's pissed off at right now. It's me he figures... Let him down. I have to fix it. He glanced up to where Grace on the steps, where Grace sat on the step. Look after her. He murmured. He came and headed for the back door. Ethan knew Seth would head into the woods, and he had 
Trust that the boy wouldn't run too far into the marsh. He was his five or eight and top, but relief shimmered through him when he heard no, the rustle of the brush and old leaves, simple enough to spot where Seth had veered off the path. Ethan pushed through tangled vines and prickled briars and followed the leaves on the trees that arched overhead blocked the glare and the worst of the sun's heat, but the humanity was immense. Sweat ran down Ethan's back into his eyes as he patiently waited and walked. He was well aware that Seth was evading him. He came a few yards ahead, finally sat on a fallen log, decided it would be easier to let the boy come to him. It took ten long minutes, with gnats swarming in clouds and mesquites sniffing for blood, but finally Seth emerged from a thicket and faced him. I'm not going back with you, he almost said. If you try to make me, I'll just run away. I'm not going to make you do anything. From his seat on the log, Ethan said to him. Seth's face was filthy, streaked with dirt and sweat. Flesh was heat and fury. His legs and arms were thoroughly scratched from brushing, pushing through briars. They were going to sting like fairy, Ethan knew. And Seth cooled off enough to notice. You want to sit down and talk this out? Yes, Mom. I don't believe anything you say. You're a liar. You're both fucking liars. You're going to try to tell me you weren't screwing each other. No, that's not what we were doing. Seth flew at him so fast, Ethan was thrown off guard enough to take the fist, first fist solidly in the jaw. He would think later, much later, that the kid threw a fine punch. The moment took all his con concentration to rush Seth to the ground. I'll kill you, you bastard. I'll kill you as soon as I get a chance. He wiggled and struggled, fought and waited for the rain. Blows. Just hold on. Frustrated, the slick, sweaty arms keep sliding out his grip. Ethan gave Seth a quick shake. You're not getting, you're not getting anywhere this way. I'm bigger than you, and I'll just pin you to down till you run out of steam. Take your hands off me, Seth said. You son of a whore. It was blow harder, more sharply aimed than the first had been. Ethan got his breath, and also, yeah, that's what I am. That's why you and I know each other. You can run when I let you up, Seth. You can. Spill filth all over me. That's what people expect from a son of horse. I'm gonna figure I'm gonna figure you want better for yourself than that. Ethan he's back, set on his heels, wiped the blood off his mouth. That's the second damn time you've punched me in the face. Try it again. I'm gonna wallop your ass so you don't sit for a month. I hate your fucking guts. Fine. But you're gonna have to hate them for the right reasons. All you wanted was to get between her legs and she spread them for you. Watch it. In a lightning move, he grabbed Seth by the shirt, holding up to his knees. Don't you talk about her that way. You have sense enough to recognize right off what kind of person Grace was. That's why he trusted her. Why you cared about her. I don't give a shit about her. Seth clammed, calm, and that swallowed hard before the hot tears poured out. If you didn't, you wouldn't be so mad at both of us. I wouldn't be feeling like we let you down. He let Seth go and rub his hands over his face. He knew how miserable Neptune could be at explaining emotions, especially some. I'm going to talk to you today, Darth Seth. You're right about what went on before you came home, and you're just wrong about what it meant. <laughs> Seth's lips quivered and said, I know what fucking means. Yeah, the way you know it, it's ugly sounds in the next room. Fast groves and dark, sour smells, money changing hands. Just because she didn't pay her doesn't. Be quiet. Ethan said patiently. I used to think that's all it was, but the only kind of words, hard and heartless, sometimes mean. All you want from the others is what you can get for yourself, so that makes it selfish too. You get some release, pull your pants up and walk away. It's not always wrong if it doesn't matter to either one of you. If it gets you through the night, it's not always wrong, but it's not the only way, and it sure as hell isn't the best way. You remember now thinking that he hoped someone else would explain such things to the boy when the time came, but it appeared that time was now and he was in charge. He couldn't say it all with a grand and wink at Cam might, or smooth as fancy as Philip surely would. He could only speak from the heart and hope it was right. Sex can be the same as eating, just feeling hunger. Sometimes you pay for a meal, sometimes you trade something, and it's and if it's fair, you're giving as much as you're taking. Sex is just sex. It's just pretty it up to sell books and movies. Do you figure that's all there is between Anne and Cam? Seth moved his shoulders, but he's like, they've got something that matters and lasts. Their lives get built on. It's not what you've grown up with, what I spent the first part of my life with. That's why I can tell you straight. Ethan pressed his fingers to his eyes. No other swarm of bugs. It's different when you care. When the other person isn't just a face or a body, that's convenient and willing. I've had that. Most people do along the way. It's different when it's just that one person who matters, who makes it right. When it isn't all hungry, hunger pushing at you. When you want more than anything to get back more than you take. I've never had anything with anyone. 
what I have is grace. I shrugged and looked away, but not before he's in all the misery. I'm like, I know you've got feelings for her, and that they're real and strong and important. Maybe part of you wanted her to be perfect, not to have the needs other women do. I think a bigger part of you wanted to protect her, make sure nobody hurt her. So I'm telling you what I just finished finally telling her. I love her. <laughs> I've never loved anybody else. So I stared off in the marsh. He heard all Hooper. The force of it was shame. Does she love you back? Yes, she does. Damn if I can figure out why. Seth thought he knew why. He was strong. He didn't put on a big show. He did what he had to be done. What was right? I was going to take care of him when I got older. I guess you think the pretty lame. No. He suddenly urgently wanted to pull the boy against him. He knew the time was wrong. No, I think that's pretty great. Makes me proud of you. Seth's gaze flicked up. And quickly, I kind of, you know, love her. Sort of. Not like I want to see her naked or anything. He had to just... I get it. Ethan clamped down on the tip of his tongue and stifled a chuckle. The quick stir of amusement and relief tasted finer than a nice beer on a hot day. Kind of like she was your sister. Like you wanted the best for her. Yeah, says so, so, Yeah, I guess that's it. Thoughtfully, he just sucked his hair between his teeth. <sighs> it's gotta be tough for a guy to walk in and see that his sister's been with some guy. I heard her. I wanted to. Yeah, he did. He'll apologize if you want to put things right with her. She'll think I'm stupid. She won't want to talk to me. She wanted to come after you herself. By this time, I say she's pacing around the backyard where it's sick. <laughs> I sucked in a breath. I was too close to the top to suit either of them. <laughs> I wrestled Cam until he brought me home from a ball club. And when I saw you in there, it made me think of how I would come back to whenever Lori was living. <laughs> She'd be doing with some guy. Where sex was business, he thought both ugly mean. It's hard to put those things aside or let yourself believe there's a different way. Since... He was, since he was still working on it himself, he didn't smoke careful. The making love when you care, when it matters, when things are right, it's clean. <laughs> that nipple wrapped in his eyes. He muttered. Yeah, little bitch out here. You should have slugged me for saying that shit. <laughs> You're right. He didn't decide after him. I'll slug you next time. Now let's go home. He rose, brushed it off his pants, and held out a hand. So stared up at him. It's all kind, his patient compassion. Quality's a man he might have sneered at once, because he found so little of them in anyone who had touched his life. Put his hand in Ethan's, without realizing it, left it there as they walked down the path. How come you didn't have me back even once? Little boy, he said, thought you'd have too many hands raised against you in your life. Maybe I was afraid you could take me. Seth snorted, blinking firstly his tears, still wanted to come. Shit! Well, you're small, he said, said, taking the cap from Seth's back pocket and snugging it down on Seth's head. Was your wire, little bastard? Seth had to take long breaths as he came close to where the sunlight struck the edge of the woods, slanting white light. He's all grace, as Ethan had predicted in the yard. Hugging her arms as if she were chilled, she dropped them, took a quick step forward, then stopped. Ethan felt Seth's hands legs and hands, gave it a quick encouraging squeeze. It'd go a long way to make things up to her, Ethan murmured, if you were to run up and hug her. Grace is big on hugs. It's what he wanted to do, what he was afraid to risk. He looked up at Ethan, jerked his shoulder closer. I guess I could, if it would make her feel better. Ethan stood back, watched the boy race across the lawn, watched Grace's face light with a smile as she threw open her arms to take him in. End of chapter 12.